Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to the new series of Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark. And I'm Kerry Kermode. I popped along to a Manx traditional event, the Braid of Steadford. And I found out from Ruth Dermott all about Mad March. Well, firstly, Kerry, a few weeks off, but not too many, and get back into it. It's been an exciting time for you. Um, you got invited to judge at a... A, a very prestigious event, didn't you? I certainly did. Mm. I was absolutely made up to be asked to judge the Paris show in France and what an array of livestock there was there, Simon. All those continental breeds that we've brought into Britain on display from their home provenance. Oh, fantastic it was. Was there um, all sorts of pigs, sheep, cattle, everything was there? Everything. It was an indoor show over eight pavilions, huge, huge area, and it was every form of livestock you can imagine the ducks the hens llamas camels really beef cattle dairy cattle sheep pigs the goats the works Mm. fantastic but the amount of people coming for the fortnight is just phenomenal over seven hundred thousand visitors through the doors and unfortunately the second week was cut short for the isolation of the uh, coronavirus so i was very lucky to get my judging done in the first week and experience the show and the hospitality that they put on and the fantastic display of texel sheep that they had there from the home where britain brought them in from um was just an absolute privilege it was a great great event yeah and uh, were they, they welcome you with open arms somebody different there Oh, very much so. The hospitality is second to none. You offered red wine at 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, they, they really do take their, their homegrown produce to heart. Everything was cheese and wine before the events, after the events. I, I sort of felt like the judging was a, a byproduct of the show. But uh, no, it really was the amount of people standing watching the classes being judged. And they're very different from how we would parade livestock here in the Isle of Man, where the, the farmer would hold and display his animal. Over there, they tether all of the livestock around this edge of the ring 15 20 odd sheep and uh, it was for the judge to walk between all of them and determine the first second third places it was quite tricky yeah did you uh did you get any groans after you picked the winner of your class no well, thankfully good, good. even in a foreign language i mm-hmm. <laughs> i could tell it was a few you didn't smiles get any... mm-hmm. not no. quite <laughs> excellent stuff well well done on that Thank that's you, a, a great honor to have uh, somebody from the isle of man invited to to judge at some a prestigious show like the Paris show, isn't it? Absolutely. OK, well, firstly on this week's programme, uh, have you heard much about Mad March? Can you know? On social media, there's been quite a lot of people wanting to support local, and I'm assuming it's something to do with that. It certainly is. Well, to find out more, I caught up with Stuart Mead, also Freya Dermot and Ruth Dermot from Red Mai out on the Orisdale Loop Road. And... Firstly, I caught up with Ruth and asked her, was it anything to do with Mad March hares? <laughs> no, no, there's no Mad March hares here. It's Manx March. And we're just wanting to encourage people to discover new Manx products and just buy a bit more Manx. And we decided that we were going to go um, set ourselves a goal and eat just Manx food for a week. Nothing that you can't buy here. We've set ourselves a goal between the 16th and 22nd of March that we are only going to eat produce from the Isle of Man. Um, We may have to make an exception for coffee. (laughs) Not sure how well either of us do. However, we can get coffee that's roasted on the Isle of Man, so that's going to be where we're going to for there. And, yeah, we're excited to see what's available. Well, Stuart, uh, obviously you've uh, lived in the UK for a bit. You're over here now living. I mean... How does the availability of produce compare the Isle of Man to the UK? I think it's the providence aspect here in the Isle of Man. You see it, it's all around you, you feel it. You know people who work in the industry and you can see, um, you, you talk to the people who are producers and there's more of an engagement than you get in the UK. Um, it's very disembodied where your food comes from. And I think a lot of this is re-engagement um, for me and re-engagement for the island because I think we're on the island in danger of going the same way as the UK and, and becoming disembodied from where our food comes from and, and how we get it. Do we, do we have the advantage here though that we are closer to the sources, uh, the availability of them or, or is it uh, still a problem? Absolutely, I think word of mouth over here is absolutely fantastic and by setting up the group you know that word of mouth is travelling even faster so we've learned about some new producers coming on board with Manx products in the last couple of weeks and 
yeah, everybody's sharing their ideas and tips on where to, to get really great produce, of which there's lots. Now, you've been involved in yourself uh, with, with the company you do here. Um, we're surrounded by chickens and uh, geese and ducks and everything like yeah. that. Um, is it, is it, I suppose everyone hasn't got the, the land to do it themselves, but it's, it's promoting the fact that these places are around about, the farmers markets, the stalls. Um, do we do a good enough job at that? I think there's a, a certain number of people who aren't aware of where to go. Um, there's been a lot of people who didn't realise there was a farm shop round the corner from them. Um, you know, by by having these discussions, you know, it's it's educating everybody. You know, where they can go, and even from a producer's point of view, it, it's it's really great to get feedback about where you might be. You know, missing, you know, consumers and getting your message out there to to different groups of people. And the, the, some of the sad things is, that, you know, there's a few farm shops around about the place and people sometimes, I don't know if they, if they blink it or what, they just drive past them to, to go to a supermarket to get vegetables that may not necessarily be Manx. I think we're very conditioned to go to supermarkets. It's the convenience factor and it's the cost factor and we can't get away from the fact that life is tough for a lot of people at the moment and it's not easy to drive around the island to go and find places and get produce that maybe you're not familiar with, make your own recipes when you've got the convenience of a big supermarket you can just go into and you can do all your shopping in one go and know you're probably going to be getting the best deal that you are going to get. Um, but in terms of the local produce, I think there needs to be an awareness with the consumer that it's a very much a use it or lose it stage of time now. If we don't buy local produce, it won't exist forever you know people can't lose money time after time after time and you could reach a stage where we are just relying on supermarkets and big wholesalers and i think that will be a very sad place to be and i think the island's in a very unique position to be something of a forebearer of buying local because we have that community because we're isolated because the boat doesn't always run um, we can really, really, really drive this local ethos. Everyone's talking about the climate at the moment and the impact of diet on climate. And yet here we are where we can make a really significant local impact on that. We're biosphere island, you know, we've talked about becoming carbon neutral. Imagine by reducing our food miles, what a significant impact that'd have. You know, people are talking about cars and things like that, but you know, that's something that everybody can do and it's something that's not onerous and it's not difficult. But of course, so you see lots on social media, you know, people, when the boat doesn't sail, you know, they do get in there and say, look, supermarkets may be empty, but our farm shops have got all of this in. Use it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is, uh, you know, they're, they're, everybody's more than happy to provide what people need, but... You know, when you get everybody coming to the farm shop, if you're not used to that number of people, it takes a long time to grow vegetables and you have to be planning now for what's going to be eaten later in the year and next year. So we can't react really, really quickly. So the continuous, regular support is hugely important. Well, the 16th of March is the big day. Freya, what are you going to eat that's Manx on, on the 16th? Maybe some Manx cheese, some Manx milk, and everything that's Manx is appropriate for Manx March. Yeah, well I heard you were going to have drop scones or pancakes that are made with all Manx flour and Manx milk and eggs. Yes, well, we all produce our, our own chickens, geese and ducks, also lockdowns. What are Lockton's? Rhinoceros? So they're a type of sheep. They can be Manx meat and Manx horns as well. All right, okay. Well, that's good. So all in all, you've, uh, it sounds like you've had great support for this event, though, and uh, you've got lots of local producers on board. Yeah, we have. Um, it's been quite incredible. Something that was just a little challenge for ourselves that we were sharing with friends has sort of taken on a little bit of a life of its own and we're scrambling to keep up with where it's going um, we're looking at doing a, a, a launch event with close lease farm uh, on the monday the 16th 
and um, we're just in discussions about that at the moment but hopefully we'll be confirming it and um, probably over the next couple of days um and it's just taken a life of its own really we've got uh, approaching 2,000 people in the group um the more the merrier if more people want to join it it's hashtag manx march on the facebook page um and yeah we're just astounded by how much enthusiasm there is for it and there are things falling out of this already we've got local butchers who are now trying to establish links with local trawlers to get fish orders in we found out that there's a new grower of uh, mushrooms on the island which is something that that came was quite a gap along with the chicken on the island something that you can't locally source since greba closed we found out that there's somebody, somebody actually setting up now so all these things are falling out of it now yeah what about the the chicken situation that's always a, a bugbearer with manx people because nobody's allowed i don't think under the laws at the moment to to do their own chickens are they not having a poultry slaughterhouse is a problem for local chicken production but also the economies of scale that are achieved in the uk means that your prices for locally reared in small groups is is just double triple or more of what you can buy in a big supermarket and unfortunately with financial pressures on families these days they they have to make difficult choices and Mm. So being competitive is very, very difficult on a small island. But the 16th of March is the big day. You've got a lot of support yep. for this and uh, we'll, we'll promote it as best we can and we'll be eating Manx as well. If we've not got chicken, that's not a problem because there's plenty of pork, lamb, beef. It's goat. all here. Goats. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. There's loads. And, and an abundance and of veg still. Vegetables. I know we're in the hungry gap, but there's an absolute abundance of vegetables. You, the stews, casseroles, tray bakes. There's loads and loads and loads of things you can do. Young Freya Dermot, Stuart Mead and also Ruth Dermot from Red Mai telling us all about that Manx week, uh, the Mad March week from the 16th of March. What a wonderful idea. I know we try and promote it at the farmers markets and in the supermarkets and on the media, but to get somebody to, you know, people to try and just eat everything Manx for a whole week. You know, it's, it's a really great yeah. idea, but it is very possible. You can do it, can't you? We're yeah. so lucky on this island. We have virtually every form of produce. If you went looking for it, you could find it. And yeah, the 16th to the 22nd of March, why not get involved? And you know, on Facebook, there you can share your dishes, share your ideas, and, and really, really get behind the local producers and growers in the world that it is now with carbon footprint and climate change. Support local. Get the microwave packed away for a week. Goodness me. <laughs> You're listening to Countryside here on Manx Radio with Kiri Kermode and myself, Simon Clark. Well, another mighty big event. Not maybe. Uh, I suppose it's held in high esteem in Braid compared to the parish uh, livestock show that you're at. <laughs> but the Braid of Stedford, Kiri, you were there. It is a fantastic event, Simon. It really is. Every year, the people come from all around to go to it. And a wild old night it was on Saturday as well. Um, but no, I went along to listen to some of the music that the the singing, the instruments. There was an array of children taking part and I caught up with some of the people on stage. John Quay, you were on the stage many times tonight. What brings you up to there? Just, Just having fun. Can't keep me off it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's a perfect night for entertainment. And I think a lot of people come just for that enjoyment. Well, it's proper homemade entertainment, isn't it? There's no uh, no iPads or TVs, nothing. This is how it used to be. Yeah. I was, I've been coming here since I was a kid. And uh, it, it's never changed, really, the format. It's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And I think some of the people in the audience, they really enjoy the judges' comments. <laughs> Oh, the judges' comments are part of the entertainment, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're critical in a very uh, amusing way, shall we say. I was going to say, let's hope that some of the competitors haven't taken it to heart. No, you, know, you, you definitely have to be thick-skinned to take the comments uh, from the judges here, definitely. What's your favourite part of the night, John? Uh, the Quarterbridge standoff. 
it's become a tradition here. And I say, would you like to hear the Quarter Bridge standoff? Well, even when they come through the door, somebody said, are you doing the Quarter Bridge standoff tonight? I said, well, if you want me to, I will. So I think it's been been doing it for the last 10 years. Yeah. Well, it, it was. It, you can see everybody's just going quiet in, in, in the listening of it all. You know, it's it's something like Madeline was saying, she, when she used to come as a youngster to the, the junior side of it, you know, the spelling bee in that part of Sedford, right, yeah, she yeah. now enjoyed, well, she used to enjoy coming to the adult part of it because it was more fun, it was humorous. Yeah, yeah. And again, it hasn't lost its humour, has it? No, no, not at all. I, I remember coming to Spell and Bee when I was a kid. I think it started at five then. They had the kids section. Yeah. And then it went on to the adult stuff. And I mean, this is early. We're at midnight now. I've come out of here at half past one in the morning. And, uh, you know, it's still going on. Yeah. And yeah. I think it'll go for many more years yet, John. Well, let's hope so. Let, yeah, keep it going. River, you're a regular competitor here at the Braid of Stedford. Tonight you were doing the Manx dancing and the violin. Do you enjoy doing the performances on yes, stage? I do. It's kind of written into me. And, and how did you ever learn? Where did you get involved with it all? Well, Mummy used to come here a lot since she was a child and she really loved it. So then she brought us here and then she managed to win a lot of trophies and I thought, why don't I do it too? My goodness, and tonight, River, you've won the violin piece with your grey dove. Yes. That was gorgeous. And was it like playing with your mum on the piano? It's really fun, actually. Also the Manx dancing. How long have you been competing at Manx dancing? I've been competing for about four years, I think. I can remember a couple of years ago you were here on the stage. You were very little then. I really was. <laughs> I was tiny. And what do you hope to be when you grow up? Are you going to carry on doing all this musical and uh, dance and things? Yes, definitely. I really enjoy dancing. And what is your favourite? Um, dancing. Um, I really like Shana's jig. The one I did tonight. And I think everybody really enjoyed your dancing tonight. Are you going to come back next year? Yes, I really am. And do you sing as well, River? Um, I do do a bit of singing, but not that much. Have you got involved with the Guild yet? No. I had got asked to do the violin at the Guild, but I thought it might be a bit too much. Maybe in the future? Yes. Probably next year. What age are you, River? Um, I'm nine years old. What's your favourite hobbies in your, in your spare time? Um, I like designing dresses. I sewed the skirt. That is a lovely, because that's for your Manx dancing. Yes. Mm. I like sewing and I like making dresses out of just tying knots. You're so young to be involved with all of these maybe traditional things, aren't you? I don't know. It might, it might seem young, but I think it's the right age to do them. Well, congratulations, River. And any more classes tonight? I don't think so, no. Madeline, congratulations. More wins under the belt tonight and for Little River as well. I've been watching her come up through the years and what an incredible talent, obviously taken after yourself. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, my husband plays the violin, not me, so I failed violin quite badly. <laughs> that must be the only thing. But to come every year, Madeline, to the Braid of Stedford, it, it's a great traditional event, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. I've been coming since I was a since I was five or six, I think, when I started coming. We're maybe younger, but I wouldn't remember that. Mum and Dad used to bring us along, and we just, you know, we'd sleep in the car on the way home. And so it must be a huge part of your life then, yeah. to, and to have your little ones come along now. It, a sense of achievement. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Yes, yes. One of my yeah, my my memories of the grade and as a child is of my granddad being the chairman and of him winning the hymn raising. And it's just it's nice to see my girls coming and seeing me taking part and thinking that it's going it's okay to go on a stage and to perform and. I don't know, it's, yeah. I, I heard tonight some people, they, they use the Braid of Sedford as a practice for the for the guild. Is this something that you would do as well? I have done with compositions, yeah, before now, yeah, yeah. And do you think traditional events like this will carry on? I, I don't know, to be honest. It used to be that you had to get here an hour and a half early to get a seat, because it would sell out so fast. And yet we, get, we came here early tonight and there's still empty seats afterwards. It used to be that it would end at about two or three in the morning and now it ends, it's been lucky to get to midnight really. So I, I worry a bit. Yeah, I know they're trying to get young people to come to it, but. I do believe like with Culture Van and they do an awful lot to support you yourself, Madeline, but also they're, they're good to support the island in the traditional events. Is movements like that going to be able to help? I think they helped last year because they, they had a big run on, didn't they, on the on the halls, village halls last year, and it was packed last year. 
It was, and lots of new people came last year, and lots of people took, new people took part, and it was great. So yeah, they, they did. They brought it to new people last year. They just needed, needed more upping this year as well. Somehow, I think it. yeah. it's one of these things. It has to be worked out, hasn't it? Yeah, but tonight, so. alongside your girls, there was other young people as well taking part. Jessica Christian, a lovely little voice She's there. Amazing. She's a fantastic singer. Yeah, so with the ukulele as well. So. To do both at once like that, I couldn't, no. <laughs> well, no, a great event, and it's so lovely to see everybody coming to support it. It really is, yeah, yeah. Alan, yes. a fantastic night again. It was a good again. night, wasn't it? Really good. Very good night, yes. Tough going as a judge, though. Well, it's not really. It's just all, it's all a bit of fun, if you know what I mean. I mean, and everybody just joins in and enjoys the evening. This is and it. that's what it's all about. You can have a day step and not have a judge. <laughs> well, this is it. It's that real sense of enjoyment. That's but right. I must say, the duets with the ladies on the oh, piano. Oh, I'm not arguing that. There's some, wow. there's some very good talent which is if you're like tucked away in the background and you don't hear very often. No, and but I suppose these people might not ever appear at the guild. No, no, oh, no, you know? Lord, no, no, no. This will be their, their only, only outing. Yeah. But they all enjoy it, you see. And the little girls there doing the duet and manx. Oh, they were lovely. They were super. And, and also the, yeah. Yeah, also the young one playing the violin. Brilliant, very talented. Very, very talented true. indeed. No, it's been a good night. Really good. Good and night. And you enjoyed your job? Oh yes, I enjoy it, always do. Is it, giving them a good ribbon there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it's all about. They expect it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Al. They expect it. You're welcome. <laughs> Tilbury, our annual excursion to the braid. Annual it never changed. And did you hear that howling wind? God, <laughs> I it was died like off a now. Movie. It was like a horror movie <laughs> when Eric was up on the stage with his saw. <laughs> I could hardly hear him for the noise outside. Have you ever heard the like in your life? I thought the roof was going to blow off. I'd just been on a while, so it probably wouldn't. <laughs> what a night! Brilliant, though, wasn't it? And they still turned out in force. Know, I know. This is it, because uh, uh, at about quarter past seven, there was sort of a reasonable crowd. And then I said to Alan Wilcox, I said, oh, there won't be so many here tonight with the weather. And then I turned round and it was full. And, you know, here we are, five past 12 midnight. <laughs> and Margie McGee's got a big bench walking down the hall, putting it in its place. And it was just marvellous. And the talent and all those original poems. Oh, no. No. Uh, amazing. Fantastic. But nobody bats an eyelid. They get up, no. they forget the words, it doesn't matter, they crack it doesn't on. Matter. And all those young ones. Do you know, we stopped the kids a few years ago. Jeff Crellin used to take the kids in the afternoon years and years ago, like back in the 90s, 80s. And, um, you know, they sort of dwindled. Yeah. Yeah. But I hope, you know, Margie's put it, you know, sort of said everybody's welcome yeah. no matter what age. And gradually we're getting more and more yeah. young ones. And, just marvellous. And Little River there. Oh, oh River my. Dance. We had dancing tonight. Fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. But the, her on the violin there with her yes, mum on know. the piano, at yes. a handful of years of age, God yeah, help us in the future no, how good they're going to be. And that young one on the ukulele with um, oh. singing. Jessica, and Jessica, Jessica Christian. Christian. She, I thought she was a star. Absolutely. And she had such a smiley face. It. She got the best smile of the night award. <laughs> but going back, John Kenyuk's award, yes. you, you had to give that out tonight, Dot. I did, and uh, John Kenyuk's award is for um, a young person, and, um, well, of course, River got it, so, uh, you know, we, we were delighted because she's just so talented and, you know, wants to do it. You know, you can see she wants to do it, so that's important as well. But you always take part each year too, with your hidden talents? Well, I did my duet with Mrs. Judy Cross, and we practice all year for this. <laughs> and we still, serious? We still play the same old tune, 
Um, Mrs. Kilgallen usually gives me mark out of 10, and she thought I wasn't bad tonight. Really? But um, there was a sing-along in the background, so you didn't hear all my mistakes. <laughs> so there's, there's a method to me madness. We, we played Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. So if anybody wants us for bar mitzvahs and weddings, we've nearly got it right. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's all part of it, isn't it? It yes. really is. And the supper. The supper? How many drop scones went out? My golly me. I don't, I don't think Ramsey Bakery make that many in a year. <laughs> they kept going out trays of drop scones. <laughs> they did, and they were all homemade as well. All the ladies homemade. and men up behind the all scenes. Homemade. Yeah. I made the egg mayonnaise this morning. Well, had a bit of bother with my eggs. They were cool girl eggs from uh, Robinson's. And... Um, I don't know whether I hadn't put them in the cold water quick enough. Oh, and you know when you've got to pick no. the shell off? Oh, golly, he'd be there a while. Doc. I don't know when anybody was... Did you hear any crunchy ones? Because <laughs> there might have been a bit of shell in them. There might have been a bit of shell in them. There was no complaints salad. from the back, though. No, I went through them with a fine tooth comb. You've got to be careful these days. You've got to wash your hands every time you crack an egg. <laughs> well, hopefully, let's hope that the braid, the braid was too drafty to have the coronavirus up here tonight. Well, it doesn't like the cold. I couldn't imagine it. It'd be blown no. away before it got no, to I the think, door. I think the corona, if, if it gets hotter, we're going to be all right. Uh, oh, well. Oh, we'll we'll have to wait a while then. We'll be outside at the moment, <laughs> waiting to come in. Anyway, next year, Dot? Well, we'll look forward to it. It's over for this year. And what a night we had. Thank you to everybody who helped and came and performed, and the audience, because obviously if you haven't got an audience, you haven't got a show. Well, you've got a show, but yeah. no, audience good. makes it. And some of these little ones here going on to the Guild. Going on to the Guild. It's a great practice for the Guild, actually, because yeah. you've got the audience right in your face. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can go to the Gaiety or the Guild, and they're far away, but here... Yeah. You're sort of the sitting on the stage, practically. And some of them jokes there might be used in the Young Farmers concert next week. Well, I would think so. I would think so. I've written one or two of Graham Crows down. Oh, yeah, you see. Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> Tricks of the trade. Yeah, the Peking Duck one's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that was John Quay. River Kelly, Madeline Kelly, Alan Wilcox, and Dot Tilbury. <laughs> uh, the old saw got in there as well, Eric Gouldy, <laughs> passing the talents on to the granddaughter now, isn't he, or the niece? It was really, yeah. really great to see Emily up there with her grandfather. And they did do get us a tune out of that saw. There is a talent there somewhere, Simon, because you could make it out and it, it does it every year that you hear a pin drop when he starts up on the stage there and at a ripe old age that he is still turns out whatever the weather yeah alan's singing there the bagpipes were in as well and and the youngsters wonderful musicians there wasn't there as well there was some lovely talent coming through with a newcomer there jessica christian um she was fantastic on the piano and then got up to sing with her ukulele and took away one of the awards for the best under 21 and also river kelly you know only eight or nine years of age they're performing in front of us manx dancing and i've been watching her for the last couple of years and she's really coming to the fore uh, the future's great for them young people yeah are you much in that sort of dancing i am hopeless when it comes to the stage really? whether it's singing or dancing of two left feet but i enjoy being part of the audience to take up the atmosphere excellent stuff well it's lovely to hear them and uh, thanks for, for staying for countryside to the, the wee small hours of the morning i hear again it, it really is a long <laughs> night but the supper it makes it all worth it them homemade cakes simon you don't feel oh, hungry going with home. You, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there for this week. We're back the same time next Tuesday here on Countryside. Of course, uh, starting this week, Kerry, is the uh, annual Young Farms concert, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So we'll be there. And really looking some, forward yeah, to it. Yeah, getting some bits and pieces from that. And uh, we'll have some clips and some chats with some of the chairmen, secretaries and judges uh, from this year's annual concert on next week's Countryside. So we'll leave it there for this week. So from me, Simon Clark. And me, Kerry Kermode. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.